Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video, I'm going to show you a template you can use to create this laser cut container. It's kind of a minimalist container. And this came about because we were trying to figure out ways to display these name flowers, which is another Cuddle template you can make. And we wanted to create a kind of rounded container that looked like a flower vase, but you could also make with laser cutting. And in the process, we discovered that this project could also be used to make containers to store pens or brushes and even to hold a little test tube to hold an actual flower. So I'm going to show you how to play with the template, how to change the shape and the settings, and I'm going to show you how to assemble it. So let's get started. You will find a link to this template down in the video description. So now that I'm here on the project page, I'm going to scroll down to see the different options I can change. Let's start with an overview of the basic construction and the basic dimensions we can change. And then later in the video, I'm going to show you a lot uh, more details. Here on the left, we can see that we have a profile view of the way the project is constructed. And here we can see the different parts as laid flat for laser cutting. So on the profile view, we can see that the project is made out of a top ring that's up here and then a base down here and those two are joined by these sections that I call the ribs and we have full control over the dimensions of these three different types of parts so let's check it out one by one to change any of these values I can click on the number and drag to the right to increase it and to the left to decrease it and I can always click on it and type exactly the number that I want and then press enter so as you can see this one changes the top ring up here that would be the top diameter of that ring Sometimes it's useful to change between the profile view and the cut view. So we can see how the top diameter changes right here. If we want to change the base diameter, we can uh, try the next one. So you can see how that base changes down here. And of course, we can modify the height and that changes the length of the ribs. As you can see, this is a very fluid form and this profile view gives me a sense of what it looks like. The next option we can change is the number of ribs. I'm going to change to the cut view here to show you. So I can increase that number and more ribs get added and more holes get added for the assembly. I think uh, three ribs is about the minimum you can have and that will give you that kind of minimal look. And then about six, I think is a uh, pretty solid construction. But of course you can choose uh, to have as many as you want depending on the look that you're going for. And you can change the width of the ribs themselves. So if I increase that, you'll see how this uh, these ribs get wider and the top ring accommodates uh, for that distance with the default settings. Uh, if I see it on the profile view, I can get a sense too. Uh, perhaps having them uh, wider makes it more stable, but there's also a compromise there. You, if, you, if you make them thinner, you might get a more delicate look. Sticking with the subject of the overall look of the vessel, I'm going to mention this advanced shaping option. Uh, before I talk about the parts where we might want to be more precise. So if I open this folder, I get this option to change uh, the belly, I call this little curve the belly. So if I change this number, you'll see that I, uh, this point here moves horizontally. And with this one, the point moves uh, vertically. And I can basically play around with that. I'm going to reset these parameters. I can play around with that in a sort of very fluid sculptural fashion because there are many uh, kind of different looks I can achieve. One interesting thing to uh, look into is to change this corner rounding to zero, uh, which gives you this very angular look, which might also be fun to play with. Now let's talk about a couple of sections where we might want to be more precise. So the material thickness and the curve at the bottom are going to affect the assembly of the project. So starting with the material thickness, if I change these, you'll see that it affects the height of these joints and it also affects the holes where they match. Let me make it smaller so you can see. Um, so for this parameter, it's nice if you can measure the thickness of your material with calipers and enter a sort of rough average here that ensures that the joints are not too long or too short. And finally, this uh, curve compensation number. And I think this is the one that's going to affect the tightness of the fit the most. I know this is a subject that uh, some people find a little confusing. So we made this tester that I'm going to show you. So uh, that's going to be linked in the description and on the project page. So with this tester, I'm going to scroll down and see the options. I think most importantly, you want to enter the same material thickness that you're going to be using for your project and then enter it here since you measured that before. And then you can download this SVG by pressing the blue button 
And uh, when you cut it out of the same material that you're going to be using, then you can use it to test the different settings. Once you have the two pieces, you want to match uh, each number to each other. So let's start with the 005. So when I when this one goes in, uh, you can see that it really easily comes out. So that that's not what I want. So let's try the 006. So this one, I can feel a bit more friction, but it doesn't fully stay in. Now let's try the 007. So this one, I can feel the friction and it stays in. Uh, I can wiggle it out relatively easily, um, but that might be a good option if you want to put glue on the joints because you still want a little bit of uh, space for the glue to expand. And let's try the 08 finally. So I can feel some friction going in and when I press it, it really stays in. Um, so for my machine, the 08 seems to work really well, but for someone else, uh, for the material and your machine, you might find another number that works. Before I jump into the assembly, I'm going to mention just a couple more things that might be useful to your project if you want to change the way the top and bottom operate. So uh, there is a folder at the bottom here that I'm going to open. So with this folder, I'm going to start at the bottom, literally. So as you can see, the bottom of the vase has a hole in the middle right here. And the idea with that one is that it was helpful for centering the flowers. But sometimes if you want to hold things in it, you might want to cover it and still have the option to center things in it. If you want that, you can check this box and that will include an additional piece that you can glue uh, to sort of have a base. Additionally, you can change the size of that hole. So that would be the base hole size in here. So as you can see, that moves around. And then the last option is that the top opening uh, auto sizes by default with the size of the ribs. So if, you, if I change the size of the ribs, you can see how this section just moves accordingly. Um, but if I don't want that, I can uncheck the auto size opening and then I can uh, change the diameter as I see fit. This one was particularly useful when I was doing the project with the um, test tube because I wanted a very specific opening diameter for that one. So that's how you do that. And then now that we're ready to cut it, we can simply hit download SVG and that's going to give us the file that we want to send to the laser cutter. So let me show you the assembly. This is the base and the top ring and the ribs. And I'm going to start by attaching the ribs to the base. And I'm adding a bit of super glue to the mating parts just to make it more firm. I think a little wiggling here makes them go a bit easier. If you make one with more than three ribs, a press fit might work. But I think with three, the glue is a good idea. Before placing this top ring, I added some super glue on the corners of each rib and then fit it in place, making sure each joint was going in its corresponding hole one by one. And then I found it easier to flip it upside down and then press and wiggle each joint to make them snap into the ring. I think I got a pretty good press fit with this. And now the flower has a place to live. I really enjoyed how this template managed to have a very organic kind of sculptural feel to it. It's almost like each shape has been molded out of clay and each one has a different character and feel to it. And I like it because I find that difficult to do with laser cutting projects that slot together because of course you're starting from flat sheets and your connections are at 90 degree angles. So it's hard to get that kind of uh, flow <laughs> going into it, but these kind of uh, managed to do it. And I already have a bunch of ideas for other things we could do with these, like a lamp, for example. So you can help the channel by clicking like and subscribing or leave me a comment. Tell me what this could be used for and uh, we could work on a template for that. Um, thank you so much for watching.